Welcome Pen Friends, it's me, your host Amy from Pen Venture, and in this video we are going to learn how to make our fountain pen write more or less wet. Join me and stay tuned. Since the last video with tips and tricks was so well received, I decided to make more videos with this kind of format. And today we are going to learn how to make a fountain pen write more wet or less wet. What a better way to do it with a example that's on my table. Someone ordered a Leonardo Momento Zero Grande Girasole and I had to change the nib uh, that was on the fountain pen with a different size. So you guys will see how you should do this process, but we are going to start with fitting the nib first because that has something in particular that you guys need to pay attention if you or the retailer will tinker with the nib there is a high probability that uh, it could have some flow problems and i'm going to show you why i have here the font pen feed which is made from ebonite but keep in mind this could be abs plastic feed ones or anything like this and we have a leonardo fine nib still but again the video will be so general that you can apply this kind of techniques to any single nib first of all we are going to insert the nib into the section how we will do that will dictate the flow of the font of Bannon. listen to me closely be very careful when you are going to touch the inner channel the ink channel with your fingers because some of the oils from your hands can transfer there and can make the flow of the fountain pen to be very inconsistent so first of all keep in mind wash your hands before doing this kind of uh, operation or use a q-tip like this one right here you dip this in some rubbing alcohol and you can swap the abs plastic feed or the ebonite feed so this way you will have no oils there. I washed my hands, I'm safe from this aspect and we are going to mount the assembly like this and now I'm gonna hold it like so. I wanna see where we have the Leonardo inscription on the fountain pen barrel and I'm gonna put it like this. It is in. We're checking the alignment and we are good to go. As you can probably see, we have the ebonite feed being on the middle. Everything looks very, very centered, so it's good. The next step in this process would be to take the cap and to see if we are clear of screwing completely the cap. Looks like we're not, so we need to move the nib a little bit more lower in order to have the cap closing without touching the tip of the nib the inside part of the cap so this is very important be very careful first time when you cap the fountain pen just don't try to go much more further than this and i've left the nib purposely like this to show you so don't go overboard with the first time that you cap the fountain pen and check if everything is okay if it's not you need to remove the nib and we are going to move the feed a little bit more higher or upwards on the nib let's check one more time to see where is the writing on the barrel and check to see if it's aligning yeah it does we can now insert it completely and let's check with the cap one more time if we done this correctly the writing on the barrel should be in complete alignment with the clip it is correct everything is well now i would like to see the adjustment of this nib and also the wetness i want to use my good old trusty loop by checking against a light i can tell that this nib is a little bit more dry than it should be the two tines at the tipping point should converge but not touch i don't know if you see this but 
our times are touching at the tip. It doesn't matter if you are going to see a little bit of gap in between them. If the tipping point touches, that means that the fountain pen is a little bit more dry than it needs to be. So the ideal case, imagine if this fist is the right tine and this fist is the left tine. When they are something like this, it is not okay. If it's like this, mm -mm, it works, but it should be something like this. Converging, like so, but not touching. That is the ideal and proper setting for those two tines in order to be a moderate to wet ink flow. So how do we achieve that? I want to show you how I personally do it. I don't know another way. I know a few ways, but they are very risky. Proceed with caution. It involves using your nails. We insert one of our nails like this and another one like this and try to use this feed. It doesn't matter if it's plastic or ebonite, like a wedge. So you have a point upon which when you try to apply pressure, you are going to spread the tines a little bit, trying to create a gap. And now you see it from another angle and try to do something like this. So now I think we are a little bit more wide. Considering this is a fine nib, I think there is a little bit more give and I'm gonna try to do this but it's very complicated to do it uh, under the light on my desk so far from uh, the edge of the desk I usually do something like this so I hold the fountain pen resting uh, on the chest and I just hope this time we are a little bit more yeah I think it looks better try to do this gradually and don't go overboard. It's better to be safe than sorry. Try to apply a little bit of pressure, a little bit more. Try to check each and every time in between applying pressure. This way it's much more safer. Like I told you, there are other ways that I find to be a little bit more risky. And by risky, I mean that you can bend the nib and it can be pretty bad in regards of uh, the nib being uh, in need of uh, special attention by a nib meister. I would like to check and see if the nib is performing as wet as I want. Let's see. It needs more flow. As you can see, we have the nib riding pretty dry and this you can see if I apply a little bit of pressure, yeah, this is what we want. Something with more ink. Back to the drawing board. And this time I'm going to show you a different way in which you can make your fountain pen write wet. It involves, again, the fingernail. And I'm going to move this uh, aside. You need to put the nib resting on your fingernail and try to apply a little bit of pressure. Try to see if you can spread those two tines without uh, making the nib rise up from the feet in the process. This is why it's so risky because you will want to have the nib touching the feed. Let's go back to the paper and try to see how it writes. So we have It's better. I would call it a much more uh, better flow. And yeah, looks like it worked. Let me show you how you can make your nib to write a little bit more dry. So I know that some pen users are using the fountain pen on cheap copy paper. They do need a much more tamed flow because uh, with high flow it comes feathering and all sorts of uh, things like this bleed through and you want to avoid that how do we make the nib write less wet you guessed it bringing the tines closer you can make them touch each other again this is not what do i recommend 
we are going to try to with this finger bring the tine a little bit more until it clears the left tine we are going to make something like a scissor action remember you need to do this action to both tines in order to bring them equally together the left one and the right one i'm going to try to do something like this so maybe you see better just follow my hands so those are the two tines you need to do something like this and then something like this so now tines should be closer together making the ink flow more tamed let's see if we are correct yeah as you see maybe this is a little bit more dry than i would like it is much more drier than this this is how you adjust the ink flow on your fountain pen by tinkering with those two tines be very careful proceed with caution be gentle it's better to do it twice three times four times or as long as it needs in order to learn how to do it correctly if you overdo it it needs special help i do recommend you to experiment with fountain pens and learn how to tinker uh, your nibs to write how you like because this is a skill that you will need if you are in the fountain pen world even i sometimes look for specialty help with some nibs for example Japanese very very fine nibs those are out of the expertise the normal expertise that I have at this moment where do I feel confident I do this kind of procedures myself to my fountain pens because I don't have the time to send uh, 10 20 fountain pens in between nib meisters and myself in order to adjust this kind of nibs so this is a skill that I highly recommend you to acquire it and the only way that you can acquire this is with practice i did see my good friend luca in visconti a few years ago playing with his fingernails on nibs and that gave me confidence to try this on my own at home thank you for spending your time with me on the pen venture youtube channel i hope this video was useful if it was useful don't forget to give it a big thumbs up in the comment section down below let me know your thoughts or if you have questions regarding nibs or if you want to see more content of this type in tips tricks tutorials and stuff like this let me know down below you'll find links for the pen venture website the pen venture social media accounts and also my emails don't forget to subscribe and help me grow the channel right here click and subscribe to the penventure youtube channel and if you want to see more quality content from penventure and myself you can check this video right here my name is amy and i'll forward seeing you next video take care stay safe right on bye bye